Martha Marie survived your first <laughs> season as a housewife. How's it feeling? Uh, I'm wonderful. I feel wonderful to be alive. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> you made it out alive. I'm sure it was a tornado <laughs> to experience. What are the takeaways for you as you walk away from season 13? You know what? I think one of the biggest takeaways is to really be intentional with the things that I say and to understand that it's not only um, what I say, but how it's going to be perceived from the other person, because everyone has different communication styles, right? That was one of the biggest things for me, for sure. <laughs> any regrets, any moments you want to do over? Oh, absolutely. I wish that there had been zero conversation about the E word. As far as I understand, and like, I, I only do anesthesia, I don't know anything, but like, narrow esophagus, that's, that's a symptom of something that's not a medical diagnosis. I never want to hear that <laughs> word ever, ever again. And I think that if I had it to do over again, I, there were a few things I would have said at the time that I did not, that I kind of waited on. And I think that the moment kind of passed. So I should have said a few things at the time. What were those things? Um, those would have been when, oh boy, when, when I was accused of misrepresenting my title. Okay, let's unpack this a little more. Okay. <laughs> you really latched on to esophagus. She said, well, it's because of my small esophagus. So her small like esophagus. Teddy, she says that she has a small esophagus. When you look back, what propelled you to do that? Were you given bad advice of like, find something to talk about it and never stop talking about it. What happened? No, so it was presented at the dinner party at Kyle's house. And Kyle had said that Sutton just pushes her food around her plate. And so the only thing I really wanted to know was what was the underlying reason causing the small esophagus. That was, that was actually it. I never um, doubted that Sutton had one. Uh, it was really just trying to understand what the underlying diagnosis was that caused that, that was all. This then kind of snowballed some drama for you and Crystal. Crystal, you were the one saying she has an eating disorder. Are you out of your mind? Crystal, did you want to go to med school? If you'd gone to med school, you'd get that. Did you go to medical school? You no, you tell me. You oh. and Annie Snow's when I met you. Here we go. Here we go. Like downplay my you profession no, again. No, no, no. You're such a bitch. Have you apologized to her for that comment, or is there part of the story is still missing. So there's part of the story still missing. Okay. So that conversation happened because Crystal asked a question about an eating disorder and I was answering the question about an eating disorder. So neither Crystal nor myself actually accused Sutton of having an eating disorder. And it sounds like there was a miscommunication and that's why Crystal got so mad at me and used that big B word uh, because she thought I was accusing her of saying the eating disorder. So I imagine you unpack this at reunion, did I'm sorry ever come out of your mouth there? I explained that I was never accusing Crystal of having said that, because I actually didn't even understand. When I watched it back, I was wondering why Crystal was so mad. I didn't even know that she thought that I was accusing her of saying that Sutton had an, an eating disorder. I mean, I will apologize if I've hurt someone's feelings, because I will always do that. That wasn't my intention of doing it, but if she needs an apology from me, I'm not above doing that. Okay, this exploded in Spain. Yes. The first thing Crystal said to me about this group of women was that you ladies were not intelligent. Damn. Nobody was educated and you're very shallow. Shallow and uneducated? She maintains she did not say the things that you accused her of saying and that you twisted words she used. Do you buy that? Funny thing is she actually did admit it later on. Oh. Yeah, she did admit it to the ladies. And the ladies, I mean, when they heard that information that I brought to them that she said about them, they weren't surprised. When she said that about the ladies, that they were in a bad place, and that's what led her to say that to me, and she apologized. You know what else I want from you? I want to thank you for, for giving what? you something to talk about and making your ass relevant. Woo! Oh, God. Do you still take credit for making Crystal relevant? Well... Let's look at it like this, okay? What was Crystal talking about before I came in mid-season? Right? She wasn't, she wasn't talking about too much, and I think that, you know, she's kind of gotten a pass for not having too much going on. And so when I entered the show, I think she kind of saw that as an opportunity to create some drama for herself and create something that she could, you know, really talk about. And 
I mean, she, the, people are talking about her a lot now, right? So do you think she thought out, oh, here's a newbie that I could take a shot at and make something happen? Well, I know okay. that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> well, how do you know that's what because happened? Because she told me that. Oh, interesting. Yes. Interesting, okay. Yes. Uh, she also maintains that you introduced yourself as an anesthesiologist Correct. and not as a nurse anesthetist or Correct. a nurse anesthesiologist. Correct. Clear that up. Yes, so this was the conversation that took place. I, she said, I asked her what she did. She said, I'm a housewife. We talked about that a little bit. And in Crystal's defense, I don't think that her, um, you know, wrongfully accusing me of title misrepresentation, I don't think she understood that it would snowball into what it did, but I knew at the time, you know, and there were a lot of, um, there was a lot of disrespect of nurses happening during this process. And that was really, you know, it was really hard for me to deal with. And it was really, it was hurtful and disrespectful. Was there more than just that fight? Because you, the way you reacted in that fight was as if you had felt disrespected by her for an extended period of time and not just in that moment. The funny thing is, so Crystal and I had met prior to filming, as you know, and she was, she was so sweet and she was so helpful. And, you know, she was really different off camera than she was on camera. And so, I just, I really felt like she was just stabbing me in the back repeatedly because, you know, there, we would be texting, like, what are you wearing tonight? What are you gonna wear to this? And then, you know, and then when I see everything play out and she's saying, I don't know Anna Marie well, but we have mutual friends. But I will say, man, she talks a lot and she asks a lot of questions. That bitch is nosy. I feel like there were several situations where, you know, she took advantage of me being the new one and not really understanding how some of the dynamics of things work. And she would play a different tune on camera versus off camera. Where do you and Crystal stand after reunion? You looked chummy at the People's Choice Awards. Well, I'm the person, I can get <laughs> along with anybody. Honestly, I can really get along with anybody. And I, you know, I thought after um, the finale that we were in a better place. And then you're gonna see some more things come up from her at the reunion. I, I don't think she's ready to let things go. You weaponized your profession against her. Oh, here we go. You have proven I, to be a liar. Like at this point, I need to just, you know, follow her lead. And I think she still has some things that she's kind of working through. How would you describe your first reunion? You know, I was so nervous going into it because there's so many unknowns. It's a really long day, um, but I feel good about it. You know, I feel like I got all my points out. I said all my truths. Um, I feel like, you know, I stayed calm the entire time. I wasn't gonna get into any back and forth arguments with anyone. I was, it was like, if it's my turn to talk, let me know when they're done and I will continue, you know? So I felt good. I felt good about it. Who is in the hot seat the most? Uh, Kyle. <laughs> to no surprise. Yeah. yeah. Could you see yourself with Morgan? Um. Are there conversations about someone moving out? Do you talk about divorce? Does she offer answers that you think the audience will be satisfied with? I think so. People are going to, you know, find out things that they've been waiting to find out. Um, you know, hopefully everyone is satisfied with what she provided everyone with. And, you know, I'm, I'm just praying for her and I'm praying for her family and praying for her happiness. Did anything that came out of her mouth surprise you? Um, there were lots of surprises. <laughs> okay, lots of, <laughs> lots of surprises. surprises, yeah. Well, fans are going through that trailer like frame by frame, like it's a Zapruder <laughs> film, trying to look for things. There's like this whole conspiracy theory that Morgan Wade came out and like made some big, I don't know what. Is Morgan <laughs> Wade there? Um, I, I don't think I could even answer that. I guess we're gonna have to wait and find out. <laughs> <laughs> we also see, it was much speculated and rumored, and then we got the trailer and we see something happening. Something happened to Sutton at the reunion. Are you okay? Oh, God. Are you okay? Are you okay? Can we call somebody, please? You're shaking. You're shaking. What can you tell me about that moment? Um, I can tell you that it is going to be, it's a surprising moment. Um, and it's just another one of those moments that reminds you to, um, keep things in perspective. Okay, who maybe left some things unsaid or has more to answer to after reunion? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know if um, Kyle and Dorit have gotten 
the closure that they that they maybe aim to. I don't know. You minimized our friendship you, to one trip. You knew that by saying something like that, it was going to create a bigger problem for me in the media with the whole Morgan situation. I was actually pretty surprised with all of that being brought in the first place. I didn't even see that rift in their relationship, so there might be things that they still have to, to talk about going forward or still work that they have to do going forward, but, you know, I'm, that's a long friendship and I'm rooting for them. Yeah, the, I feel like the, the group, the ensemble, is in an interesting place. Yeah. There's a lot of fractures, there's a lot of cracks. Yeah. Having put yourself through the reality TV ringer, yes. do you want to do this again? So for me, absolutely. I was there for half a season. Right, I think that's perspective people need to have is you were kind of called in off the bench at the last minute, yes. like, hey, come play for the team. Yes, like the ladies were already midway through the season. When I was asked to do it, I, I started filming so soon afterwards. It was very, very fast. And there were so many things that were going on in my life when I was filming. Um, my mom was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer oh, wow. and she passed three months later. Um, I was dealing with adoption trauma, which I opened up to um, Dorit and Erica about when we were in Spain. I know I have this very confident exterior, but I've still got a lot of work to do to feel like I'm in a peaceful place for myself and for my family. And I wanna be happy. So there were a lot of things that people didn't see about me. You know, you only see one personal scene with my family and I, um, so people don't really get a sense of who I am, per se. And I think that, you know, I, I started this and agreed to do it because, you know, I want people to be able to relate to me. I want people to find something in myself, whether it's, you know, as a, as a mom of four, um, as a professional, as a former athlete, as someone that was adopted, as someone that's biracial, whatever it is, I want people to relate to me and I want to be able to, you know, show people that you're not alone. There's somebody out there that's like you. You've been met with some backlash online, which yeah. you've opened up about, reacted to. Yeah. How has that all affected you as a human being? You know, I would love to be able to say, oh, it doesn't bother me at all, it's fine, but it does. And the reason is because I pride myself on being such a kind and inclusive person. And so for people not to, you know, really have a sense of who I am and what I stand for, and then to be receiving backlash from it, that's why it's so hard. Because it's like you want, you just, if people are judging me on me, I can take that. But when I feel like they're not, then yeah. that's where it gets really hard. Is there anything that's out there that's untrue or that you want to clear up that you've seen? I'm a very strong, independent woman, and I was raised to have my own beliefs and my own opinions. I just want to show people my fun side. I just want to have a good time, show people who I am, and, you know, like I said, hope that people can find something in me that they can relate to. Marcel, he always tells me that the reason he fell in love with me is because he's like, you're an eight and a half at everything. He's like, you're not a 10 in looks. You're not a 10 as an athlete. You're not a 10 in brains. He's like, but you are a solid eight and a half at everything you do. Have you had discussions with Marcellus about the 8.5? Oh and my has God. has that moved up? That is so <laughs> funny. That is the funniest thing to me and I get asked that so much. So we, he's my best friend. Like that is my person. Like we can joke about everything and anything. And also like I was an athlete, right? Growing up. So. I would never have had a coach that's gonna be like, Anna Marie, you're perfect, you're a 10. So I don't need anyone to say that I'm a 10. Like, it's almost like a 10 is not even attainable to me. And he also said that I totally got it wrong. He's like, <laughs> I didn't say you were an eight and a half across the board. He said I, you were an eight and a half average. Oh. I'm very type A, very OCD. I do not cook, like those kind of things. He's like, those are your two. Okay, so, so th he's that's like, the it kind that's of, bringing you down a little exactly. bit. Exactly. What do you rate him? Oh, like an 8.5 too, like okay. he's not perfect. Maybe to an 8.4 just to. <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about it, like one to 10, five is actually average. So 8.5 is not yeah, that bad. Yeah, it's not average. 8.5 is not bad.